So Louise, it is so good to see you. It's like those seven years just <laughs> didn't even happen, right? Well, what is, what is it like to be back in Fresno? Well, first of all, it's really great to see you. Oh, well, thank you. Seven years ago, you were one of my very first friends here in Fresno. And I enjoyed that time and with you. If, I don't know if you remember this, but the very first time that we met was by phone. And I was chasing my dog in the backyard. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you were so patient with me. And, and you're just, you're so easy to care about. Oh, and well, thank you. I really appreciate all the years of friendship. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Well, I know that people here are really excited that you are coming back. Um, how, tell us how that happened. Uh, did you well, figure you wait a while and then come <laughs> back and re reprise the role? Well, the last time I was here, my daughter was expecting my first and only grandchild, and I decided I didn't like the sound of daycare. Not that, not that there's not some great daycares, but those first few years are really important in molding a child and their personality and, and their heart. So I decided I would be daycare, and <laughs> I've had a great time, but she's graduating kindergarten, so it's time for me to move on to other things like coming back here and playing. And she's going to see me on stage for the first That's time. That's wonderful. Cool. So her name is Larkin. Larkin. Larkin and yes. does she like to sing? She does. Um, I think she will be a better actress than singer, mm -hmm. but she wants to be a singer. Maybe she'll be able to do it all. I know that uh, this time to Deadwood, <laughs> as Calamity Jane going to Deadwood, I will uh, have a chance to do it all. Um, Lori, in, when they invited me back, Lori said that I needed to bring my instruments. She had tried to convince me that Calamity Jane played instruments the first time around. I, and when she brought it back up, I said, no, Calamity Jane did not play instruments. She said, Calamity Jane did not sing and dance. <laughs> this is entertainment. Bring your instruments. So, so this I, is Lori Pisano, who yes, is the director. the director of the show and really helped shape your performance oh, last yes. time, right? As in, taught me everything that I know and I'm and still learning from her. She is incredible. And I think one of the things that was really perfect is when I f first came here uh, seven years ago, she was in a show. And so I had a chance to see her act before she ever directed me. And so I, she had already learned my, res you know, earned my respect. So when she told me to do something, I would do it. And if I didn't look right doing it, she would change it. But I came here and became a sponge. And that's what I'm doing again. I'm a sponge, and I'm continuing to learn and loving every minute of it. I remember you like that word sponge. <laughs> well, it's important. You know, my manager, Clint Hyam, who got his start here, mm -hmm. when he arranged for me to come the first time, he said, Louise, do not go in thinking you know anything. You go in, and you don't make suggestions. You don't question. You just learn. And that was great advice. I just came and and I learned very quickly that the director is in charge mm. but you have to when you have that many people somebody has to be the teacher which I know you know about <laughs> somebody <laughs> has to not only teach but direct and uh, she's she's an amazing person so Lori wanted you to play mm -hmm. some instruments now I remember you played the fiddle last time but you're bringing two yes well I played the fiddle as an encore as an encore because I said okay I'll bring the fiddle if I can play it as Louise Mandrell. And I said, and if the audience isn't really into the to everything, I'm not going to do it. But the audience just kept standing up. So it's like, oh, I can relate to that. Country music, they stand up, you mm -hmm. know. So I, uh, I would bring out the fiddle and do an encore. And uh, I'll still do that if they, you know, if the audience wants more. And hint, hint, that means stand up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I love people. And that's why I'm having so much fun. I, I really like music, and I, I enjoy entertaining, but the reason that I, I enjoy it is because I love people. And that's why I stay after and sign autographs, because it, it just gives me a chance to meet everybody, get their input, and, and, and hear about them. And, and you sometimes had a really long line of people who wanted, uh, who wanted to talk to you. And you know what? I ate it up with a spoon. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm a middle child. I need the attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so getting back to the instruments, you, mm -hmm. you 
are going to be playing the harmonica and the yes. banjo. And, and you had to kind of brush up on the, both of those, right? Yes, it had. Well, I've never played the harmonica before. And I thought, harmonica is easy. I've heard people pick it up and blow a tune. But what happens is they pick it up and they blow a tune, but it's four or five notes at a time. And I wanted to learn this like a professional, the single notes and the slurring of the notes. And I, I put a lot of time into it. And I've, ha I've ended up enjoying it. My dog, Bobby, that was here last time, she's not coming back with me, but she hates the harmonica. <laughs> and when I played the banjo, which I had not played in 35 years, when I played the banjo, she danced. She loved the banjo, but she oh. hated the harmonica. But I'm also bringing in accordion and, of course, the fiddle, which I'll play during the show. And, and then uh, if, if the audience is really into it and wants more, I'll play some more. So I know you, that you're going to be updating the show a little mm -hmm. bit, just to make it a little more contemporary. But is it? It's essentially the same story. Well, it is a story where I like it because it's where women have an opportunity to notice we can have it all. We can have it all. We can fit in with all the guys, and yet we can be a woman. We can fall in love. But I love this story because she not only discovers that she loves Bill but she discovers what it feels like to be loved back. And so it's a really warm, loving ending. She, she discovers it's okay to, she has a girlfriend, she, the guys like her, the townspeople like her. And, and, and I relate to that because I've always been a little bit of a kindergartner because I really, if someone's mad at me, I can't stand it. Everybody has to be happy. Everybody has to like me. And so Calamity's the same way. She can't stand it if anybody's unhappy. So for people who didn't get to see the show the first time and who have never seen the show at all because it really isn't done very often, how, how, do, you, how do you pitch it? What do you tell people it's about? Well, first of all, I'm, I don't think there's ever been a play written that I could be more comfortable with than Calamity Jane. I mean, I'm coming to town with my, my gun and twirling it and my whip, and, uh, which I really can crack a whip, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, and my instruments, and but most of all, Calamity Jane is an entertainer. She wants, she tells these great stories, and she exaggerates them a little bit, but that's because she wants to entertain people. And if you want to be entertained, you need to meet Calamity Jane, <laughs> because she is an entertainer. And I had a lady ask me one time, she said, why would you want to go be Calamity Jane when you can go somewhere with your 10-piece band and your 10 dancers and do a production show and be Louise Mandrell? Why would you want to go be Calamity Jane? The truth is, as Louise Mandrell, I can entertain and I can be so big, but Calamity Jane, there's nothing that holds her back. Mm. She can be as off the chart as she wants to be. She can be bigger than life because she's a character. And she really is a character, but uh, I love it. it. It's playing make-believe. So I want to encourage everybody to come, be a kid, join us, have fun, and share in a really good story, and be a part of it. So did you miss the character during these, these last years? Yes, I did. And it was, it was really strange when I left here because all of a sudden, um, well, first of all, I left a lot of friends, and you being one of them, thank you again. But um, going home and not being calamity, do you know that when you cook dinner and you wash dishes, hardly anybody stands up and applauds, <laughs> okay? I mean, <laughs> nobody asked me for my autograph unless it was to sign a check. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's great to be back. What? is it like to come back to Fresno? Well, I now know where everything is because I've been doing it. First time I was here, I didn't drive around so much because it always had somebody taking me everywhere I went. But I made sure that uh, my name was on a rental car and I could drive around and start seeing more of the city, figure out where I wanted to go to go shopping. And mm -hmm. I love it because the people here really are friendly. And this is, this. This is a little bit of a cowboy town, and I fit right in, you know, when you say cowboy. <laughs> Just catch us up on what you and your family have been up to. Well, now, both my sisters, Barbara and Arlene, each have a grandchild. 
<laughs> so each of us having a grandchild, things have changed again, at, you know, at any family function. It's, it is all about the kids, but Ernie made a good point the other day. She was looking at her daughter and she said, wow, that her, her granddaughter, she said, looks just like her daughter did when she was little. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with mine. Barbara had uh, a grandson, so it's, it's not quite the same. But they're all three smart and loving little kids. And it's, I think it's because they are shown so much love. I, I'm really proud of the grandmothers that my sisters turned out to be. And, and it's great that they're all close in age. It because is. Because as cousins, they'll be able to grow up together. Then. Yes. Um, this last Easter, there was a big Easter egg hunt. And of course, all the grandchildren wanted to come to my house because they'd already heard from their parents the way, place to hunt eggs is Mama Lou's house. <laughs> <laughs> and that's who you are, is that's Mama Lou, That's who I am, right? Mama Lou, because uh, I always had the big Easter egg hunts. Um, I missed it so much when our kids started getting older and they didn't want to hunt for eggs. So one year I went to my mom and dad and I said, this year I'm putting money in the eggs. I want to see some kids hunting. <laughs> and I need you to sponsor the golden egg. <laughs> so I, I, I love all of that. And I know a lot of people think who... Um, a lot of Christians, I'm a Christian, uh, think that maybe the Easter egg hunt is not exactly, you know, mm -hmm. what w the way to teach kids about Easter. But the egg ap actually represents new life, and it is part of the story of being a Christian. And there's so many symbols yes. that are great to learn. Filling them with money, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> the American way. <laughs> when I first got to town, Right away, I wanted to come see one of the shows. And they said, well, do you just want to come in and see the show? And I said, no, I want to come in and eat dinner and see the show because the food is incredible. And they said, I thought you were on a diet. No, I want to come in and eat and, and have the entire experience. This is an incredible place to come and eat. Oh, my gosh. I've never been to a dinner theater where it's, it's so incredible. And so I just want to say to all my friends, that are out there, come eat, and then enjoy the show. And it actually makes for a really great evening. It does. Kind of a long, leisurely way to get away from the world. You can uh, just escape. So did you get to see Hairspray then? Is that yes, the show that I you did. saw? Oh, okay. Yes, I did. And there was a few characters in Hairspray that are in this show now. And um, of course, I wanted to see Hairspray because I had some friends in it. but. This place is, is amazing. It's like one big family. And one of the things I love the most is they say that um, the best audience is an entertainer watching a show because they appreciate everything that's going on. They appreciate how hard it is to accomplish certain things and what it means and what it means to the person hearing the applause. So everybody around here, uh, you can tell when one of the other performers is in the audience because they're making plenty of noise and letting you know they're there. I love that. And the audience is here. We have a lot of locals that come back for most of the shows. And they know exactly what to do. I like a professional audience. It's been great.